Hey, John. Hey, John. Um, well, you haven't done this in a few years. So, what? How did? Uh, what was the night like in terms of seeing the draft board fall? Marjan being there. Milt mentioned that you guys were really excited about it, maybe even to the point where you want to move up. So, what was what was that kind of like, and then be able to actually turn in a card and make a call? Yeah, it was great. I mean, a great process. The the hundreds or I don't know thousands of hours collectively that a staff spends to. Um, go through this process and explore all your options and be ready to move up and move down and move out and, and just all the different things and have your target and work on your board and, and the hours that our scouts spend on the road and away from their families to really study these players and, and understand who we want to get. And at the end of the day, would you be right or wrong? But Marjan was a player that was ranked incredibly high for us. Um, and as the draft progressed, we felt like there was more and more chance that we could get him. We didn't want to rely on getting him at 24, so we worked really hard to try to figure out a way um, to basically control our own destiny. Um, you know, credit to, to our guys and the process. Great partnership with Rich Paul and Calvin Andrews and Clutch. Uh, those guys are incredible partners and friends in the business. And I think for us, we got a player that's uh, exciting. For him, he has a home and an opportunity to, to really grow and develop and mature um, with a great culture, you know, and a great, great group of veteran players. Uh, so often with the picks you guys make and the players that you acquire, we're talking about three-point shooting or offense. Uh, I think Marjan's skill set, more defensive to start. What kind of gives you the confidence that he'll be able to do enough offensively that you get to use the tools that I think you guys are really excited about defensively? Yeah, Eric, I think it's it's – to me, it feels like the IQ of the player. I, I think he really understands how to play, um, and he believes in himself as a shooter. He's he's uh, he uses the ball. He uses the ball in pick and rolls. He uses the ball in the mid range. He's he's a willing three point shooter. Uh, he's got great size. He's got great form. I just think it's something that'll grow through reps and through opportunities. Uh, playing in the G League's hard. You know, he's a young player that played in the G League. It's it's the college basketball is hard too, but G League's a whole different level. And so he played against you know NBA level or pro level players at, at many different times. And and I thought throughout the year he got better as the season went on, finding his spots, finding his rhythm, finding his confidence. So I think it's it's the basis of the skill set that he has, but also the IQ. I think he really knows how to play. So yes, I hope he become a great shooter, but offensive. I think he's already pretty gifted in just his feel and his understanding of the game. Uh, what excites you guys about him defensively? Length, athleticism. I think he's got a grittiness and a toughness to him. Um, you know, he's going to have to work on his strength like any young player. He's going to have to work on understanding where to be. But I, I, I really think his length, that's athleticism, and kind of his mindset, I think he wants to defend. Um, again, the IQ, I think he understands the importance of that. And he's played against really good players. One thing about the G League is a bunch of fast, quick, athletic guys. And I think he really held his own. You know, we studied the heck out of him. And he was, he was pretty impactful defensively this year, being kind of a big wing, but playing a lot of guards. So I think he's had some good experiences and kind of believe that he can do that at our level. What was talking about during the pre-draft draft process? Y'all had long conversations with him. He kind of told y'all about his background, his life, and stuff. Obviously, it's an interesting personal story. But what was it that appealed to you about just what he was like off the court and just what he had been through to get to where he is now? Yeah, <clears throat> that's the special part of this process is you get to learn about people and. Yes, we're betting on skill sets and you're betting on statistics and things that they've done, but you're also making bets on people. And you never fully get to know one in, through an interview process, but you do the best you can, just like in any other walk of life or in business. And so um, having dinner with him, spending time on the court, off the court, um, spending time around the people that are around him that are close to him, you know, doing your research and, and getting information on the backgrounds and, and all the intel that you can do. I think what we feel strongly about Marjan is that he's got a great heart. He's a really, really really good person. He loves basketball um, and he wants to be great and he's willing to sacrifice and, and put in the work and, and really commit to an environment and a culture that I think will grow and develop him to be great. And so I think it's the determination that he showed and the spirit of it. I mean, he's got a great heart. He's a great kid, um, great young man, I should say. And I think that's what Bud and I and, and our staff and spending time with him really felt. I know Mike will, will make these determinations, but I guess as you and your your staff scouted him, and especially the way it sounds like you, you think he can play defense. Um, is there a hope, a thought he could be, you know, in that? I hesitate to say rotation, but you know that regular season rotation of being able to play. At, you know, at 21 years old and some experience, or does it feel like this is still more of a, you know, two one two kind of building to that point? 
Yeah, it, I think it's a balance. There's no way we want to put a ceiling on when he can have an impact. And I also don't think we want to put any undue expectations or, or undue pressure on him to say that we need him to play to be good. I mean, I think we're, think we're a really good team. We're on the verge of, of being great kind of each year these last few years. And, and I think we're going to be really good again next year, hopefully. I think he has a chance to, to work his way into that. And if he doesn't, that's OK. Like, we have a, a rookie scale guy um, who we believe in that I think can have an impact. But what that looks like is to be determined. And, you know, we've talked about the G League is an opportunity for him to grow and develop if he needs to get minutes, if we have a role for him um, throughout the regular season. Bud is and his staff are incredible at development, player development, whether they're playing in the games or not. We have a great system where guys get better in our system every single day. And we're all committed to helping Marjan be the best that he can be. That could be minutes um, for our team early, or it might be a lot of G League. I think that's to be determined. But um, we wouldn't have used a very valuable asset, as we talked about the other day, um, on a player if we didn't believe that he could figure it out with us. Was it important for you to make the pick this year? If you look at, obviously, the investment you've made in players and you, what you spoke about, but you kind of look ahead. And there aren't that many first rounders in your immediate future. Maybe that that's the goal if things go the way you want. Was it kind of important that to, to say, okay, land a first round talent for this roster that could be under team control for you know four years? No, I, the focus wasn't to draft a guy. I think what we talked about the other day, the focus was to figure out what the best value opportunity would be. We had lots of opportunities to trade out. We explored opportunities to trade up. Really, they were to trade for Marjan. Um, trade down, we evaluated those. Didn't want to get out of a range where we could get him. And I think at the end of the day, we felt that the best value for 24 now and going forward for us was to draft it. Um, but it wasn't out of a sense of urgency to have a rookie scale guy. I think that we feel that's going to help us kind of extend this window and be the best that we can be, not only now, but going forward. <clears throat> so the emotion with Marjan on TV when he got drafted, what was the conversation like with him when you told him that, that he was the one that was getting picked by you guys? Yeah, I, I mean, pretty special. I mean, kind of emotional, almost almost uh, got me to choke up a little bit. He, Again, I think he cares about being great and in, in being with us at a high level. He wanted to be here. Uh, whatever we did in our process and spending time with him, I think he really wanted to be with us. We wanted to have him with us. Um, He's, he was on the on the TV tonight. I mean, his story is incredible. I think for him to um, go through the things that he's been through and to get where he's at, to be drafted and, and be on the stage tonight was was an emotional thing for him. I love I love the uh, kind of the grittiness and, and the adversity that is part of his background and part of who he is and, and the happiness and the heart and the spirit that he has um, in spite of all of it and kind of working with it. And I think it's made him uh, who he is today. And I think brief conversation, but Bud and I, it all came out right. I mean, he was. He was emotional. He was excited. He was thankful. Um, and I love that. I think that'll carry over to kind of a humble, hungry, smart attitude and kind of how we're built. You know, a bunch of competitive guys with a chip on their shoulder and have something to play for. And I think he's another one of those guys. With all your duties as GM, how much time do you spend on the draft during the season? Is it just here and there and then crash course after the season ends? Or how does it work? Can you Both. Think it? Yeah. No, it's uh, – I think we spend a lot of time in the draft. I mean, our, our scouts, we, we meet – we meet all the time. I watch a ton of video. Milton and I travel a lot with the team, but we also break off from the team to go scout while we're on the road. Um, the draft matters, and it, it matters so you can evaluate, you know, your opportunities based on drafting or trading. And you can't actively do that unless you've really spent a lot of time. But also, we have, obviously have full-time jobs in other areas as well. So there is a crash course um, this time of year always that exists and trying to get through these things. But um, yeah, we spend a lot of time on it. Uh, in New York tonight, uh, when Marjan took a question about what it's like to play with Giannis and the Bucks and how exciting that is for him, he just brought up the fact that he's going to get to learn from Chris Middleton. Um, what does it mean for you to have vets that like excite players, but then also they can see, like, oh, this guy actually wants to, to help me along? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool because right? Chris, at the end of the day, was a second-round pick. Uh, I think they're very similar uh, physical. They're kind of like body comps. I do think there's some game comps there as well um, in, in some areas, the way that they defend, the way that they get their shots off in the mid-range, the way they use in the pick and roll. Um, for him to recognize that, that kind of goes to the IQ thing that I mentioned. I think he's a very, very um, smart, intelligent basketball player. I think he really understands the game. He has a lot of passion for the game. He's a Rainer Beach, right? I mean, he, he played in Seattle. He's played with all the pro you know from a young age like he he gets it he knows kind of our game at a pretty high level for him I didn't I didn't know that obviously it was busy after we drafted him but um, for him to make that connection I think is really high level and, and 
honestly, that's one of the things we thought about. You know, he can grow in our system because of the vets that we have. Chris, Giannis, Drew, Brooke, Pat. I mean, you kind of go down the line. I think that these guys um, will really kind of mentor him and put him under you know, their arm and help him grow and be the best he can be. Uh, Milt mentioned the wings that you guys have to play in the East and just kind of the, like how – important his size is just what does getting bigger mean to you guys kind of this off season i think we're huge right as a team but i think ways to play skilled and bigger um is important and i think marjan as a young guy we'll see what he grows into um has a chance to be a really skilled um big guard good wing good wing size whatever it is skill and size you know combination I think we have a lot of that but just more of that our league is con I think they're constantly trying to catch up to the way we're playing and adding size we, we're a huge team and I think he's a guy that gives us a chance to do that he's another guy that can you know play big he can play small he's versatile I think he can play two three as he gets stronger can he play a four um, how his shooting grows things like that but I think the versatility of him just lines up with the way our league is going uh, there's a report that you traded for the 58th pick in this draft and selected Hugo Bizon. Is, can you comment on that at all and give us any information there? Yeah, I can't. Uh, you know, obviously, as the draft goes on, there's a lot of moving parts, trades, different things that are being talked about. Nothing's official yet, but I, when it is, we'll comment on it. Um, how, it, how difficult was it, um, I, I guess, to get the background you no, would normally get with with Marjan in the sense that you know he after high school decided to train and work on his body and then COVID happened and he couldn't do that and then you know just 12 games of a juco so you know you mentioned the g league but that's not the usual amount of film or maybe groundwork or legwork that your staff would probably do so what was that process like to make you feel good about you know the, the things that you saw and, and to be able to project them yeah, it's just the network of, of my staff. I know Ryan Hoover, um, who runs our scouting group, and uh, Ronald Dupree, who supports him, and, and kind of going on through our group, Dave Babcock, who's been with us forever. We have a staff collect collectively, even with Milt Newton, some of our assistant coaches, um, people who've worked with us previously. You have a network of people, and that's part of what you try to build as a staff that live in the world of basketball. And you get as much information from many different areas as you can. I mean, there's a, a former Wisconsin herd coach who we are really close to that knows Marjan really well. And that was really helpful for us, right? And, and that's just one example of many that you really just try to connect the dots and you really figure out where your web, how far it extends, and learn as much as you can, watch as much as you can, pull it all in and make a decision. And we'll see if we're right. <laughs> well, which coach were they? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Yeah, thanks guys.